Hey Booktube, it's time for a wrap up. I got my ticket for the long way round. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks. And today is time for an April wrap up. And I uh, had to split this up into two parts because it was just too long. There's too many books. So here are all the romance books that I read in April. So I'll just start with the most recent thing I read, and that was Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. On audio, this is narrated by Grace Grant, and I read it as a buddy read with Elena from Elena Reads Books, and I love doing that with her. So if you can, and you know who she is, and you read the same kind of stuff, definitely a good idea to buddy read a book with her. We hated this book. <laughs> we really did. I am going to get rid of it because it was just so bad. In fact, I am technically calling this a DNF. The best thing about this book was the narration by Grace Grant, who was really, really good. This book is terrible. It's about two people who hate each other, who have nothing in common other than the fact that they're attracted to each other. So they spend the whole book having a whole lot of sex and a little bit of dialogue and hating each other, which, you know what? Bye-bye. Okay, one star. The Secret of Ella and Micah. This is by Jessica Sorensen, and it is narrated on audio from two points of view by Lake Roberts and Megan Hayes. This book is new adult romance, and it, uh, I don't know, there just didn't seem to be much of a point to it. The plot was weak, the characters were not very well drawn, and once again, bye bye. Two stars. Gwen, over at the Gwendolyn Reading Method, put together a TBR of new adult books that she wanted to read, and I realized I hadn't read any of them either. So I contacted her and said, hey, I'd love to read those with you, and she said, that would be great. So the first one of those that I read was Sweet Home, and that's by Tilly Cole. That's uh, not available on audio, so I read it as an ebook, And it's about an English girl who is... Um, went to Oxford, but she's an orphan. She's had a hard life. She comes to the University of Alabama and gets involved with the quarterback of the football team. He is the big guy with the wealthy family, and he's got his problems. She's got hers. It's their romance. It's okay. It wasn't anything to really wow me. I had some problems with the way that it was written, the way the characters were developed. Um, you can check out my review for that on Goodreads. I ended up giving it two stars. Another book on Gwen's TBR was Stinger. This is by Mia Sheridan, and on the audio, it is narrated from two points of view by Maxine Mitchell and Brian Polino. This book was a total surprise to me. I thought, I'm not going to like this. It's about a law student and a porn star who meet at their respective conventions in Las Vegas. And I thought it was all going to be about how this romance, you know, happens, and we're supposed to feel really... Um, accepting and tolerant and sorry for this porn star because of his life. It didn't turn out to be that at all. I was so impressed with the way that Mia Sheridan took this story. Once again, it's new adult romance. It's really good. I highly recommend it. I was well narrated, although not overly so. And the thing I want to tell you about the narration is that Maxine Mitchell, when she asks a question, she doesn't ask you a question. She asks you a question, and she phrases it like a statement, and I didn't really care for that. Brian Polino was okay. He wasn't great, but uh, overall the narration was very good, and I ended up giving that one four stars. Another one on Gwen's TBR was Bully by Penelope Douglas. This is narrated on audio by Abby Creighton, and Abby Creighton was really good. I really liked her narration. Uh, nothing really much to say about it other than I really liked it. This is a story about two high school kids. They've grown up next door to each other, been best friends, and then one summer, the boy goes off and is away for the summer, and when he comes back, he's very different, and then he starts bullying his friend. And so it's the story of how they deal with that. They are now seniors in high school, and she's had it with it, this bullying stuff. So, you know, it's the story of how they cope with that. There were some problems that I had with it, but you can read about those in my Goodreads review. It was a classic case of the end of the book really redeeming it. And so I ended up giving it four stars. I've been reading Mariana Zapata's new adult romances and really enjoying them. So I had not read Rhythm, Chord, and Malikan. 
So I picked that up. It's narrated on audio by Carly Robbins, and I liked it a lot, although it's not my favorite of the books that she's written that I've read. This is about a girl who goes on tour with her brother's band, and she becomes the merchandise girl who, you know, sells everything at the concerts. And it's the story of her romance with one of the guys in a band that travels with her brother's band. Ah, uh, I don't know. It, it was kind of rough for me. Um, this was not a girly girl, and she had grown up with brothers, and everything was kind of crude. There was a lot of bathroom humor, and just, I don't know. I didn't care for that part of it. But it is Mariana Zapata, great slow burn romance, and I gave it three stars. Under Lock by Mariana Zapata was narrated by Callie Dalton. I really like Callie Dalton and the way she narrates Zapata's books. I love Zapata's books anyway because they are slow burn romances, but Callie Dalton, I, I have a lot of good things to say about her as a narrator. I just really enjoy her. She's really good at doing all of the things, like I always say, that a narrator can do to make a story better. She was just really great. Really great pitch ranges on the voices, really good embodiment of the characters, just all around good narration. This one's all about a motorcycle gang and a girl who uh, is kind of peripherally involved with them. And uh, it's a slow burn romance. Older guy, younger girl, really good stuff. Love Mariana Zapata and I gave that one four stars. I was on Twitter one evening and I noticed that someone tweeted about uh, a, a story by Colleen Hoover that I'd never heard of before. Well, she's one of my favorite new adult authors. So I went on Goodreads, found it. It's called Too Late and you can read it online on Wattpad. So I read that and it's a good story. It's um, all about a girl who is trapped in a relationship with a guy who is a bit of a drug lord in a college town. And so it's the story of how she tries to get away from him. It's really well done. It's a good uh, kind of crime-ish kind of story. Uh, it's got a romance, but it's also got the elements of, uh, you know, crime. Solving, uh, you know, catching the bad guy. And so I ended up giving that one four stars. Nobody But You is book three in Jill Shalvis's Cedar Ridge series. On audio, it's narrated by Karen White, who just is the perfect person to narrate any Jill Shalvis novel. This one wasn't my favorite of the series, but, you know, it's Jill Shalvis, and I ended up giving it three stars. Get a Clue by Jill Shalvis is an ebook I read because it's not available on audio, and it's kind of a twist on the game of Clue. It's a little bit of a murder mystery, adult romance, a little too fluffy for me. Yeah, not her best work, and I ended up giving that one two stars. BookBub sends me daily emails for free and cheap ebooks, and so I had picked up one of those a while ago. It was called Room for You, and it's by Beth Eamon, and it was delightful. It's about a single mom with twins who is very young. She's only like 24, and she lives with her mom at a bed and breakfast that her mom runs. And there's a hockey player who gets stranded on his way home due to weather. And they get acquainted and fall in love. And I liked it a lot. I thought it was a sweet story. It had a lot going for it. I read it as an ebook because you can't get it on audio. And I gave it four stars. And then I promptly picked up the sequel, which is Room for More. And it was just as good as the first book. Uh, no lack of quality from, you know, the continuation of the story. I loved it. Loved it. And I gave that one four stars, too. Where the Road Takes Me by Jay McLean is narrated from two points of view by Nick Podell and Laura Hamilton. Nick Podell was the best thing about that book. I, <laughs> this was new adult romance, um, although the protagonists are in high school. So, I, you know, I just did not care about this book at all. I didn't care about these characters. Uh, Laurie Hamilton's narration was pretty good. Nick Podell's was excellent, but the story was just so lackluster. The characters were flat. I just didn't care. I just could not bring it in myself to care about these characters. And the plot was weak, so I just gave that one one star. The Scarlet Deep by Elizabeth Hunter is book three in the Elemental World series. This is all about vampires. It's narrated by Dina Perlman and not my favorite of the series. This one convinced me that I think I'm pretty much done with this uh, series of books. 
This is a companion series to uh, another series she wrote, and while I like the first series, the second one not so much. Uh, Dina Perlman's narration really bothered me, so I ended up finishing it as an ebook, and I only gave that one two stars. So that's it for the romance. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you have any kind of opinion on anything in the wide world. I would love to talk to you about it. So let's talk about that in comments, and that is it for now for me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm gone. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk. You're gonna miss me by my talk. Oh, you're gonna miss me when I'm 